What's up and welcome back. I'm John Stark from MacMillanGuy.com and yes, this is exactly what it says it is in the title description. Uh, if you're watching this, the vice presidential debate is tomorrow. So I decided, why not take a, another look, a second look at J.D. Vance. This is a second look at Hillbilly Elegy. Uh, and uh, it's, it's on Netflix. It has audio description. It's directed by Ron Howard. It stars Gabriel Basso playing J.D. Vance, uh, Amy Adams, uh, Frida Pinto, Glenn Close, who was nominated for an Academy Award and a Razzie for this at the same time. Um, and uh, it is... So, it's there. You can watch it. For my blind fans, I've got a black baseball cap on today and I'm wearing a Spider-Man shirt. So, for this review... So, uh, we have two vice presidential candidates. One of them had a movie made about them because they wrote a book, and the other one doesn't. So, how am I? <laughs> how do I celebrate this content? Well, I rewatch Hillbilly Elegy. Now, you're going to be surprised to hear I actually enjoyed Hillbilly Elegy the first time around, and the second time around, I still enjoyed it. Um, I don't like J.D. Vance as a person, but that doesn't mean that I won't like the film. Uh, I'm not going to just decide to turn my uh to turn everything around and be like well I don't like this because I don't like um I think what happened here is that Ron Howard did his own thing and adapted the film in a way uh it does make JD look um like some sort of weird superhero or romantic love interest. I mean, he comes out looking pretty great in this film by the end of it, but uh, it's really hard to ignore the fact that Amy Adams is giving like 110%. <laughs> I actually thought Glenn Close was giving like 110% too in her role. I don't, I, I didn't understand the Razzie nomination at all. I was more along the lines of the Academy. I actually thought it was a really good performance from her. Uh, I think she's probably uh more, I'm more concerned with her performance in the deli the deliverance than I am this, um, but I thought she was really pretty good for this. So, um, Gabriel Basso's fine, Frida Pinto's fine. So I don't, you know, I'm not really too scarred by this. Somebody else is in this film too, playing the sister, but it's really underwhelming, and she's barely in the film, so I, we're not, we don't need to talk about it. But I know, I, I know it's an actress that I know, and it's. I don't even think about it. I just, I literally forget sometimes that he has a sister. I'm just like, oh yeah, there's a sister in this film for like a hot second. Um, so yeah, JD keeps having to come back and forth because of his family and he keeps having flashbacks to when he was younger and, uh, you know, he was misspent youth and then he turned his stuff around and started studying and, and he eventually gets into law school, meets Frida Pinto, all that kind of stuff. So Although we don't really get that whole, like, meeting Frida Pinto thing. He kind of just already is with Frida Pinto at the time. So it's not really uh, about their relationship, like uh, Usha, uh, who's now all over the news and hoping she'll become the second lady. That's what they're called, I think. Is the name. Anyway, um, this movie doesn't have a lot to say. The one thing that I think is interesting is I don't think many people know that J.D. Vance has changed his name a couple times. So what I think is funny here is that he's as young as he is, and he's referred to as J.D. Vance. And I think that's like a retroactive, like, application. It's something I learned about J.D. Vance later, is that that's not his real name. And he's changed his name. His name has changed a couple times. So, um, I, I don't know if this is fully accurate in that way. I don't, I don't want to know that much about this guy's life. <laughs> so... Uh, I've heard the complaints about the book and uh, how it paints hillbilly culture and how it blames poor people for being poor uh, and those kind of things. The, all the criticisms that now come out because, well, he's, before he was just an author, now he's a vice presidential, presidential candidate, so everybody and their mother is reading Hillbilly Elegy for the first time and putting their thoughts out on the world. Um, what's that redneck... Uh, comedian guy that's uh has a youtube page uh he talks about meeting jd vance and what he thought of the book and all that kind of stuff and i i, I listen to his his thing liberal redneck or something i don't know some stand-up comedian uh so 
Uh, but I I don't like JD. He's, he's uh, I think he's he's a walking dumpster fire of a human being. Um, I don't know what he wrote in this book here, but I like Ron Howard as a director. And I think what Ron Howard did is he took, he saw something in the book in Hillbilly Elegy that he wanted to direct, that he resonated with, and he made a film. And I think it's important to be able to say what Ron Howard did here still works and that these performances still work. Um, it's all, but it is a version of, it's an adaptation of. So this is one of those things where, thank God, somebody didn't faithfully at, uh, adapt the book because this film now stands on its own as its own thing. And I know not everybody liked Hillbilly Elegy when it first came out. So um, it, it's divisive. And I'm not going to say it's my favorite film either. It wasn't my favorite film when it came out. I just, I like films where there are strong acting. And it's really hard to look at this film and say, Amy Adams is bad. You know, <laughs> I mean, like she's giving 127%, 145%. I don't even know. It's really off the charts. She's always fantastic. She always gives everything she has. And that's what she's doing here. So for me, uh, I can, even a mediocre film gets a little bit better if it has fantastic acting in it. And I felt like Hillbilly Elegy has acting that I love watching. I love in, really getting in these performances. Amy and Glenn are just exceptional. I love their performances here. And I still love them on a second viewing. Uh, the audio description is, uh, is solid. I thought it was really good. Uh, I never felt lost or anything in this. Um, it highlighted everything well, uh, from what I could tell. So, uh, I, I don't know. I just, I, yeah. It's how Billy Elegy again for me. So, um... I guess this is more like in defense of the movie, like just trying to take the movie out of that uh, and put it in its own little pop culture bubble and set it off. But I also know that not everybody likes the movie. Is it perfect? No, nah, it's, not, it's not a perfect film. It doesn't quite fully, it, it, lit, it jumps all over the place in terms of, are we going back to the, oh, we're in the present, oh, we're back in again. Oh, where are we in time period? I have no idea. You know, I mean, Ron Howard time jumps so many times in this film, it's a little bit incoherent, um, which means it's hard to even really fully lay in the plot with addiction. The addiction thing isn't even really set up that well because we're just sort of like in it and then we're not. And then we're in flashbacks and then he's learning math and stealing calculators and then he's Ooh, just giving him a call. And, and this film is narratively all over the place. It's really hard to follow sometimes where you're like, what is happening? Where Ron Howard calm down calm down man <laughs> like it's um but somehow masterfully by the end of it you're like oh that wasn't bad you know <laughs> but like while you're watching it you're just you're like what i'm trying to keep up with you man i'm trying to follow you i'm trying to get what you're doing here um but yeah because of that it's, some of the things are just he ends up like underdeveloping things that you don't even really fully realize that he's underdeveloped because you keep jumping around and you're like well maybe we'll come back to that or well he keeps jumping around and we'll, we'll explain that later or uh well i'm sure we'll see the origin story to that in a later scene and then you end up not seeing really anything about like um about that it is jd vance's bio and not his mom's but i did feel like i wanted to know more about addiction and how she got into this because part of this thing is like his he feels this, like, strong duty to his mom. But then we also see that she's kind of a piece of shit for, like, a lot of the movie. So, um, I mean, he's being raised by his grandmother long before he's ever in law school. Uh, and his mom is, like, out of the picture. So, um, I don't understand. And, like, there are scenes where even when he's he's young and she's, like, attacking him, I'm like, where is the origin story of this? Like, how far does this go back? I feel like the dynamic should have focused more on him and his mother because that's where the film's heart is. But the film focuses so much on this, I'm going to pull myself out of being a hillbilly uh, and, uh, and that lifestyle. And um, it didn't quite give that the main storyline it's due. You know, uh, the resonance in, in uh, fighting addiction and how do we get over it and what is... What does addiction really look like when it affects the family? All those kind of questions. How do you get into it? 
how do you get started? How do you uh, get into something and, and unable to get out of it? All those kind of questions just are never really answered. So uh, it just kind of is like a performance, like Amy Adams just kind of is addicted, you know? Uh, and uh, she's a great job at it, but uh, I think she probably would have preferred more. And I don't know if there were scenes that were left on the cutting room floor. It's really hard to tell because again, Ron jumps all over the place narratively. But I like strong acting performances. So the grade might seem a little bit higher here, but I think Amy and Glenn are fantastic. I think Gabriel's pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't give him an Oscar nomination, but uh, Amy and Glenn, I would. So, um, all that said, I'm going to still give Hillbilly Elegy a B. I think it's perfectly fine uh, as a film. So, I, I don't think JD is as a human, but uh, or as a vice presidential candidate, but uh, this movie is. So, uh, anyway, there you go. This is as clickbaity as I could possibly get is the timing of rewatching Hillbilly Elegy uh, for the second time. So this is the second look at Hillbilly Elegy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I will see you guys on the other side.